namo guru dev namo om namo guru dev namo om namo Om in peace. Welcome to another part two of episode two here on Temple of the New Humanity TV. This Kundalini Crash Course. I am Swami Christ Ananda Brahmanati, Father Brian Rice. Yes, I play a dual role. I'm very happy to be able to do that, to go about an apostolic yogi priesthood as well as, uh, so it's, it's a dual in nature. Independent Catholic, very progressive, liberal, free thinking, which goes very much hand in hand with the teachings of Sanatana Dharma, or the eternal religion. Anyway, so yoga, the art and science of yoga, is the path that I walk, with Sanatana Dharma being the continuous presence, the continuous platform, so to speak, on which I experience growth. Okay, enough about me. <laughs> so, you, you may have a lot of questions. You may have been confused by part one of this episode. A lot of stuff surfaces. That's the way my mind works sometimes. But what we want to do is we want to concentrate. And we're going to, I'm going to share what I was, what ultimately is part of a free webinar. You're watching it, so it's free. But this will be in an, in an extended form, a whole webinar on Kundalini Awakening is what, in, in, in talking about the anatomy, the entire anatomy, biophysiology, astral anatomy, causal anatomy, all how it relates to the workings of Kundalini and the workings of the evolutionary force within ourselves. My guru, one of my gurus, Paramahansa Yogananda, talks about the purpose of life. And I'd like to read from these cards in talking about Kundalini Awakening. He says, the purpose of life is to ascend, the, to ascend the six spinal centers, reinforcing the human consciousness progressively with greater and greater lights until it is able to unite with the all-pervading, thousand-rayed brilliance in the highest center of the brain, the Sahasrara Chakra, as we talked about in Part 1. This ascent of consciousness through the spine may be achieved slowly, through right actions, right thoughts. The yogi, however, chooses the quicker and more scientific method of meditative yoga. Can you awaken Kundalini through other forms of meditation? Absolutely. But we're focusing here on Kundalini Yoga, Kriya Yoga, and Yoga meditation in general. So, Yogananda continues by saying, The internal consciousness of ordinary people operates only from the lumbar, here is a point behind myself, the sacral, and the sensory perceptions and enjoyments. The divine lovers and celestial poets, they work from the heart center. The calm, unshaken yogi operates from the cervical center, or the Vishuddha chakra, in the throat. And he who can feel the presence in the entire vibratory creation is awakened, has awakened, the medullary, the negative pull, and the positive pull of the Christ centers. Yogananda says, the illumined yogi functions in the cerebral center of cosmic consciousness. And he may be spoken of as an ascended yogi. Okay, if you're still confused, what is the kundalini force? 
the coiled creative life force at the base of the astral spine. Kundalini has always been symbolized as a serpent when this creative force is asleep in delusion. It flows down and outward and feeds all the senses. Uncontrolled, its stinging venom causes insatiable lusts. But when the pure kundalini force is awakened by the yogi, it rises to the brain and is transformed into the bliss of spirit. This uplifting serpentine current is called, according to Yogananda, Vasuki, the supreme force of human liberation. The analogy can be made that God is manifested in the downwardly flowing creative power, Kandarpa, which through sex is responsible for the creation of children, and God is also in the uplifting current, Vasuki, which begets the offspring of divine realization. So that's Paramahansa Yogananda talking from God Talks with Arjuna, his translation of the Bhagavad Gita. Now, he talks about the esoteric path of light. And this is on a website called the Pyramid of Self-Realization. Wonderful sight. A quote from the Gita. I shall now declare unto thee, O best of the Bharatas, Arjuna, the path traversing which at the time of death yogis attain freedom, and also the path wherein there is rebirth, fire, light, daytime, the bright half of the lunar month, six months of the northern course of the sun, pursuing this path at the time of departure, the knowers of God go to God. Now these mysterious stanzas, uh, they're pretty much woefully misinterpreted, according to Yogananda, by all the commentators. In reality, they contain the stanzas themselves that I just read contain symbolic references to the science of yoga. They describe the opening of the spiritual eye, the awakening of the cerebral spinal centers, and the ascension of the life force in consciousness through them to cosmic consciousness and liberation in spirit of the yogi who follows what Yogananda calls the way of light. I would call it the way of fire and light. And on the contrary, they describe also the dissension or return to body consciousness or rebirth of those yet unable to open fully at the cerebral spinal doors that lead ultimately to spirit. And he says that liberation, freeing the soul from the physical, astral, and causal bodies is the purport or purpose of these verses. The ponderous scriptures, he says, of the Rishis have defined in veiled terms the labyrinth of the soul's descension and ascension. And Krishna, in the stanzas I just mentioned moments ago, he stated that this portion of the yoga science succinctly, for Arjuna was able to comprehend his guru Krishna, the God presence in Krishna. Arjuna, the advanced yogi, that is, and Devaki. Here are the rudiments of the of those stanza of the stanza themselves. What it breaks down to meaning. It states that the yogi who attains liberation must follow the path of fire. Here, fire means the life energy, the kundalini power. You know, I, that in the last episode I talked about Tao Malachi from the Sophia Nautic lineage. He calls it the fiery, intelligent, desire energy. So the kundalini power is the fire. The devotee's first scientific step toward emancipation is to gain control of his life force. In ordinary men, 
the course of prana is downward, the way of darkness, says Yogananda. For going from the brain to the sensory nerves and to the countless cells of the body, this dispersion in diffusion of life energy reveals to human consciousness the material world. Into 24 that we just